I think the important thing is to just keep doing, get up and keep doing it. And I do think that's the difference in somebody who becomes a more accomplished painter versus somebody who doesn't is just the fact that they keep doing it, even when they don't want to. Again, I've mentioned sometimes I spread around and you know jump around a little bit in the painting and work um, everything up at once, and then other times I work in this way. Um, I probably more often work this way in the studio because it kind of helps me complete a train of thought. You know, as I'm wor working my way down, I'm comparing the previous value and color and I can make notations as I go. Whereas if I lose my train of thought and jump around, I might not um, remember to do certain things. I, I, I have less of a good memory now than I used to. I used to have an amazing, especially short-term memory, was just phenomenal when I was young. Um, but I don't anymore, and so I've kind of learned, boy, if I think of something, I better do it right there. Because then I, it doesn't come back until it's too late or something, and I'm in my car going somewhere and going, oh, God, I forgot to do that thing. In painting, it feels a bit like that, where it's like, you know, one concept building on the next concept, and so you're trying to constantly have, like, a system and a, and a routine of what you're doing, so that way it's, it flows more easily. But sometimes I like to jump around in a painting because it, it kind of gives me a blueprint for how I'm going to develop it. So I don't always do the same thing every time. Right now the upper lip has a pink, it has some of that pink light hitting it, but it's not overly saturated. And it also has some blue tones in there, too. Now the lower lip has kind of like a little rainbow of colors happening. There's some purpley pinks to blues. But the lip line is pretty dark, but I'm gonna keep it warm. I, I don't think I've ever used like blue, like just cold blue in, in um, a lip line. It's just kind of a rule of thumb that I have to, to not. Um, and I have seen, you know, like fashion use like cobalt blue in the mouth or cobalt blue in the eye, like the dark of the eye, and it works really well for him. It does not for me, so I don't do it. And if you find that you have trouble getting warmth in your features, then you probably need to use more warmth than your darks. So that's, that's usually the first step to getting that to feel more lifelike.
So yeah, I just slow down when I work in the mouth area because it's so challenging. probably given up on more paintings because of the mouth than any other factor when it comes to portraits. I try not to give up on paintings anymore. Um, I try to see them through to the end even if I know they're going to be a stinker. just because I think it's kind of a valuable process to analyze what happened and to also just just think of painting as something sometimes it's just a painting you know it doesn't have to be a winner you just have to stay uh, in that vein of getting painting done and not every painting is going to be very good sometimes you know there's not a good painting for months and months. But if I wasn't painting at all, then I really wouldn't have any thing to look at or any way to, to judge. Because I, I kind of think of the painting is just, it's a bit reflective on where you are in life to a certain degree, um, where your mind is. And there's times when I'm not painting well and I'm, I'm happy. And then there's times when I'm painting well and I'm not happy. Um, I don't know if they're always, generally, you know, if you're painting well, they, it does kind of make you feel happy, um, but not always. Sometimes I'll do a painting and just remember it being miserable and then later see the painting and think, oh, that was kind of fun. Um, yeah, I don't know. It's just bizarre. I think the important thing is to just keep doing, get up and keep doing it. I do think that's the difference in somebody who becomes a more accomplished painter versus somebody who doesn't is just the fact that they keep doing it even when they don't want to or they feel it's not accomplishing a lot. I mean part of it I ask myself what else am I doing in my life that I get that same satisfaction from and I and I can't think of anything else I mean I have other hobbies I have a lot of hobbies that I enjoy um, especially gardening I'm, I just love gardening it's like the biggest other hobby or other thing of my life obsession I guess um, but it's more it's, it's a, it, it satisfies a different part of my psyche and my soul than painting Gardening is one of those things when I fail at it, like something dies or something's not a successful bloom or whatever. Um, when I am less successful at it, I don't necessarily take it personally. I can usually chalk it up to, oh, I neglected it or I got really busy or it got a fungus or, you know, it's just kind of the cycle of life and next year it'll be better. And that's kind of just my philosophy on gardening. Um, painting's not like that. I mean, quite often when paintings aren't going well and I'm having a tough year or whatever, it's, it's kind of reflective on all, a lot of factors. And so I can analyze that and say, well, I was very distracted this year and I allowed uh, myself to get um, taken away from painting and this is the result of that. You know, I, I, I wasn't very prolific with painting and so that's why I fell behind and in, in where I want to be with painting. Um, and so it's just, it's, it's more on me. There's not a lot of outside elements that I can credit with the reasons for it not going as well. And for that reason it has a different place in my, in my soul. And I'm grateful for hobbies like gardening and sometimes I get on a sewing or knitting kit, kick. Um, I'm really grateful for them because they are creative and they 
satisfy like a, a dream in the mind or whatever. But I'm also equally grateful that there's something that is to me at the top of all of that that is the ultimate in dedication and devotion and it's, it's for me it's a, it's elusive you know and I don't feel like I'll ever accomplish what I want to with it because I don't have enough lifetimes for that and I'm okay with it I spend a lot of my time thinking, what do people feel who don't have art in their life? What is their life like? What Do they have that passion for an equally p good passion for something else? Or do they, do they not have it? I mean, how do you exist without some kind of a passion? And I would just assume that if you're taking a class or training that, that you too have that. Mm -hmm.